conducted searches yesterday in an attempt to try and recover looted goods after unrest in South Africa. Stanley Malemacha, who's a human rights lawyer, joins me now on this issue. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News this afternoon. So how do you balance, say, the police's rights in terms of the Criminal Procedure Act, in terms of not needing a search warrant, uh, with people's right to dignity in terms of think, Section 10 or the Bill of Rights? Um, thank you, Nzinga, and thank you for having me. Uh, good afternoon to the viewers. Um, I think what is important is that uh, we must take note of uh, Section 22 of the Criminal Procedure Act, uh, which provides for circumstances under which um, a police official may search someone or their property without a search warrant. And those circumstances are if the concerned person um, consents to the search and seizure, or if the police official on reasonable grounds believes that a search warrant uh, would have been issued or would be issued to him, and that the delay in obtaining that search warrant would uh, defeat uh, the objects uh, of the search. Now, how do we balance that with uh, you know, the fundamental human rights in our constitution? Is, that's a really important question. We need to take note um, of section uh, 14 of the constitution, which uh, provides for the right to privacy. And this right includes uh, the right uh, not to be, you know, not to have your person or your home or your property searched or your possession uh, seized. Now, in terms of uh, the seizure of, uh, you know, prop, uh, property or the alleged uh, looted goods, you know, one, the person who's in possession of uh, that uh, property will actually have to prove, you know, um, ownership or legitimate um, possession uh, of that property. Then, you know, also the right in Section 14 is uh, it's not an underrogable right, uh, meaning that it can be limited and its limitation must be done in accordance with uh, Section 36 of the Constitution, which uh, permits uh, for the limitation of the rights um, in the Bill of Rights to be limited in terms of law of general application. Now, without a doubt, uh, the Criminal Procedure Act is definitely a law of general application because it applies to everyone within the borders of the Republic. It doesn't target a particular race, gender or class. Mm. What we saw yesterday, and it's just a fraction of those searches, so I'm, I'm speaking on that basis, is an area that perhaps looked like a poorer area. Just explain to us the rights that people have when it comes to people entering their homes, like we were seeing in those visuals yesterday. And, and, and I know you've spoken about there's no class or race when it comes to how rights are applied. But it feels as though the people who were targeted yesterday were in a certain class and were of a certain race. Yeah. I mean, yes, I mean, you know, I, I can't, uh, you know, um, dispute that um, this uh, search and seizures have rather been, uh, you know, uh, seem to be targeted uh, to, to a particular um, class of people. And perhaps what tells us is that, um, you know, the lootings are to a certain extent where a cry against uh, poverty and the deep inequalities um, in, in, in our country. So perhaps what um, those who are searched, uh, they need to um, know that they have rights. Um, those rights include um, the right to say no to that search and seizure. And uh, at the same time, also appreciate that actually the police um, need not um, produce um, a search warrant. So our law enforcement officers need to be cautious that when considering, when, when um, you know, engaging in those search and seizures, they need to take into account the right to equality and the right to human dignity in such a way that the search and seizure does not amount uh, to degrading or a dehumanizing conduct. And also an important point that I need to emphasize is that, you know, uh, due to the fact that um, a lot of children, especially children, in, uh, well, children, all the children um, are at home now because schools are closed. You know, so the police need to be cautious and need to exercise their right to search and seizure in a manner that does not leave, uh, you know, children traumatized um, during the searches. Because, you know, also you've just mentioned that this uh, search and seizures have been, uh, you know, kind of like targeted uh, to a particular class of uh, people in, in our society. Mm. What recourse do people have if they are unhappy with the police searches or treatment as you've just spoken about? Yeah, 
Um, now, the recourse that people have, of course, if uh, someone feels that the police official is acting outside the bounds of the law and there are incidences of abuse uh, by police officials, um, a case may be uh, reported and registered with um, the IPED, you know, which is the investigative body which um, you know, overlooks uh, the conduct of the police and uh, punishes or rather investigates any wrongdoings um, within uh, the, the, the police uh, um, department. Now, also, on the other hand, um, there's a number of uh, public interest organizations uh, which are available to assist anyone whose rights have been violated uh, during the civic unrest or during the search and seizures. And they've actually devised um, a, a toll-free number uh, where people can call or WhatsApp them on 76 2110772 so you call if you you know you are witnessing or you are a victim of uh, human rights um, abuses uh, during the search and seizures or even during the um, civic unrest mm -hmm. what are the requirements in these situations of a successful prosecution so police go in they suspect something they don't have a warrant but what what is going to lead to a successful prosecution i mean you know, as, as a, as a successful um, prosecution, um, you know, it, it needs, we need to remember the yardstick of uh, proving a criminal case is that the state, although it might have, you know, been boasting about the number of people that it has arrested and also just making mention of the special team of prosecutors uh, that it has, uh, you know, put in place to um you know, deal with these um, issues that we need to remember that according to criminal law and criminal procedure is that um, the state has a duty uh, to prove a case beyond reasonable doubt. And in criminal cases, we need to remember that the state is the dominus litus. It is the alleging party. And according to our laws and rules, he who alleges must prove. So the state really has a lot of uh, work um, cut out for itself um, in terms of, you know, uh, successful uh, prosecutions. And also we need to, you know, be mindful of the elements of a crime, you know, which uh, includes, you know, unlawfulness and intention. All those five elements, you know, they need to be proved uh, before one can, you know, talk about um, a successful, uh, uh, you know, prosecution. And also what we have noted is that uh, during protests, arrests um, are rather indiscriminate because at that particular time during an unrest, um, the police are not per se arresting those who they deem to be contravening the law, but they arrest in order to, you know, to contain the situation, in order to mm -hmm. restore public peace. So it is highly possible that people might find themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time and not necessarily that they are breaking the law but they are just at the wrong place and at the wrong time so it will be a very you know challenging task uh for the national prosecuting authority to prove beyond reasonable doubt that everyone who's arrested has actually committed uh you know an offense you know Thank you so much for your time. Stanley Malimatra, a human rights lawyer, speaking to us there about some of that unrest that we've seen and the aftermath of that, those raids and searches by police. Of course, I did try and speak to the police to understand more what's happening. Uh, two spokespeople denied our request for an interview, saying that it's centralised and they will update us um, a little bit later on, perhaps in a briefing later today, or when they're allowed to speak about their operations and how that's working. So we'll update you as soon as we get that.